Today we're going to talk about basic differentiation rules and rates of change. Uh, so these rules are going to allow us to not have to use the definition of derivative that involves taking the limit, and instead we can apply these different differentiation rules when taking the derivative of a function. So the first rule that we're going to look at is something called the constant rule. So it says if c is a real number and f of x equals c as a constant function, then the derivative of f is 0. So basically what this is saying is that the derivative of every constant function is going to be the 0 function, or it's just going to equal 0. So if we look at a few examples, right, we're taking the fun uh, derivative of f of x here, f of x equals negative 4. So then f prime of x is just going to be 0, because negative 4 is a constant. So the derivative of it is going to be 0. Um, here we have f of x equals pi. And if we take the derivative of this, pi is still a constant. So its derivative is going to be 0. Um, the reason why this works is because remember that this is just a horizontal line. And the derivative represents the slope of the tangent line. And if you think about a horizontal line, a horizontal line has a slope of 0. So that's why it's going to be 0. Uh, for this example, we have e 7e to the third. e is just a constant. Raising it to a third power is still a constant times 7 is still a constant. So this is still going to be 0. And that's the constant rule. Uh, the next rule we're going to talk about is something called the power rule. This one is very helpful because a lot of times we're dealing with polynomial functions, and the power rule can help us more easily find the derivative of polynomial functions. So if n is a rational number, then the function f of x equals x to the n is differentiable, and the derivative with respect to x of x to the n equals n times x to the n minus 1. Uh, so basically what this is saying is if you want to differentiate your function f of x equals x to the n, you just take your power function, which is x to the n, multiply it by n, which is your uh, original your original exponent, and then raise it to the degree that is one less than the exponent that you started with. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of applying the power rule. So we want to find each derivative. Uh, one thing that you want to note is recall that when you have something that looks like this, the nth root of a to the m power, it's just saying that a is being raised to the m divided by nth power. It can be expressed as a fractional exponent. Uh, so applying the, pow uh, the power rule, so we have f of x equals x squared. If I want to take the derivative of this, f prime of x, uh, it says I take the original exponent and I multiply it by my power function and then I subtract 1 from my exponent. So I get this. So f prime of x will equal 2 times x. Applying this to the next problem, so we have f of x equals x cubed. So if we want to take the derivative, f prime of x equals, so 3 times our power function, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so 3 times x squared. So then this would just be 3x squared is our derivative of x cubed. For x to the fourth, Again, we do the same thing. f prime of x equals, oh, that's not a very good color. Let's erase this, change this color. Um, let's go with, let's go with this one. So we have f prime of x equals 4x to the third. Go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to try these next two on your own. So now that you've worked through these, compare what you got. And we should be pretty proficient now at using the power rule. So let's take a look at some other differentiation rules. Uh, another rule that is often coming in handy is the constant multiple rule. The constant multiple rule says that if you have a differentiable function and c is a real number, then c times some function is also differentiable. 
and its derivative with respect to x would be c times the derivative of our function. So basically, it's just saying that you can take the derivative of a function and multiply it by the constant multiple that we have in that function. So let's try a few of these examples. Um, so if we want to find the derivative of f of x equals 3x squared, we could think of this as 3 times x squared. So if I want to take the derivative of this, f prime of x equals, it's going to be 3 times 2x to the first, which is just 6x. So that's the derivative of 3x squared. Uh, the derivative of negative 3 eighths times x to the 16th. So that's going to be negative 3 eighths times 16x to the 15th. We could do some multiplying. So 3 eighths times 16, that's negative 6. Negative 6, and then x to the 15th. And that would be that derivative. And then lastly, um, we can rewrite this as 15 times x to the 4 thirds power. So if we want to take the derivative of this, f prime of x, it's going to be 15 times, so 4 thirds times x, uh, 4 thirds minus 1 is 1 third, so it's 4 thirds x to the 1 third power. Uh, 15 times 4 thirds, that's going to be 20. So f prime of x equals 20. And then times x to the 1 third, that's times the cube root of x. So 20 cube root x would be the derivative of 15 times the cube root of x to the 4th. The next rule that we're going to look at is the sum and difference rules. Uh, it says if you have two functions that are differentiable, uh, then if we add or subtract their those functions, that will also be differentiable, and we can find their derivative by just adding or subtracting their derivatives respectively. So let's try a couple of these. Uh, so example four, we want to find each derivative. So we have f of x equals 3 plus 2x squared. So this is just a constant function, so I know that if I take the derivative here, that's going to be 0. And then we can use the... Um, constant multiple rule and the power rule here. So it's going to be 2 times 2x to the first. Uh, so that means my derivative then would be uh, 2 times 2x is 4x plus 0 is just 4x. Looking at this next example, if I want to take the derivative here. Um, so we can use the constant multiple rule and power rule. So it's negative 5 times 3x to the second. And then we can add that to the derivative of this. So this is 4 times 1 times x to the 0. Uh, we know x to the 0 is just 1. So this whole thing turns out to just be 4 times 1, which is 4. And then this is going to be negative 15x squared to give us our derivative. And then the last one, uh, we can rewrite um, the square root of x as x to the 1 half and then evaluate this derivative. So f prime of x equals, so this is just going to be 4x to the third plus, so this is going to be 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power. Um, so this negative exponent moves it into our denominator so we get that f prime of x equals 4x cubed plus 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So that would be the derivative of this function. Um, the sine and cosine functions can also, uh, they're also differentiable. And we have that the derivative with respect to x of the sine of x is just the cosine of x. And then the derivative with respect to x of the cosine of x is the opposite of the sine of x. So if you're taking the derivative of sine, it's cosine. If you take the derivative of cosine, it's the opposite of the sine. So let's try a few with these. We want to find the derivative of each of these here. 
So f of x equals 3 cosine x. So if I want to find the derivative with respect to x, uh, it's going to be 3 times the derivative of the cosine, which we said was the opposite of the sine of x. So that means that f prime of x is just going to be negative 3 sine of x. Um, for the second example, we, have, we can pull out a 2 thirds. So we can think of this as f of x equaling 2 thirds times the sine of x. Because now we can just take the 2 thirds and multiply it. So if we take the derivative of this, it's going to be 2 thirds times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Uh, so that would be the derivative for that. Um, and then this last one, taking the derivative, f prime of x equals, uh, we can think of this as 1 half cosine x. So the derivative there would be 1 half times the derivative of the cosine, which is the opposite of sine. And then this right here is just a constant, right? The cosine at pi over 2 is just 0. So taking the derivative of a constant is just going to be the 0 function. So that's going to be plus 0, which means that our derivative is going to be negative 1 half sine of x. And then the last rule that we're going to look at is the derivatives of natural exponential function. So if you have e to the x and you take its derivative, it's just e to the x. This is probably one of the easiest derivatives you will ever have to do because the derivative of this function is just that function itself. So let's try applying some of these derivative rules. Uh, so we want to find the derivative here. So this is, let's do it in this color. Uh, taking the derivative here, f prime of x, it's going to be 5 times the derivative of e to the x. And we know that that's just e to the x. So that is our function's derivative there. Um, if we want to take the derivative of Example b, the derivative of the first part is just e to the x. And then the derivative of the second part, uh, so this is x to the first. So it's going to be 4 times 1 times x to the 0. x to the 0 is just 1. So 1 times 1 is 1 times 4 is 4. So we get e to the x minus 4 is this derivative here. And then lastly, uh, we have 7e to the x, so taking the derivative of that is going to be 7 times the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x, minus the derivative of the cosine. The derivative of the cosine is the opposite of the sine. So subtracting a negative, that's going to make it a positive. So we have 7e to the x plus the sine of x. So that would be that derivative there. Uh, so those are the basic rules that we are going to be using and utilizing for um, section two. And those are going to continually being, be applied throughout the rest of your course in calculus. And we're going to add more rules onto these, but these are the probably most basic rules and ones that you'll use most frequently.